Good afternoon on the National News this Hour from BGI Television. First, the headlines. Presidency, article clash over Tinumbu's economic policies. Probe missing 3.4 billion US dollar IMF loan. Serap tells Tinumbu. Blackout as national grid collapses first time in 2024. Road blockade as residents protest high living cost in Mina. How I escaped from gunmen who killed my colleagues, Ekiti Monarch. On sports, South Africa face Osimes Nigeria. Ivory Coast will still alive in Afghan. I am Mori Revila Lawal. The news in detail. The presidency and ex vice president Atiku Aubakar traded words over the state of the Nigerian economy and the monetary policies of President Bola Tinumbu. In a post on X, article the 2023 presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, said there is hunger in the land as basic commodities, including bread, are becoming out of reach for average Nigerians. However, in a swift response, the special advisor to the president on information and strategy, Bayo Onanuga, said Atiku has embarked on a mission as a poor opposition in chief, noting that the reforms the Tinumbu government will cause immediate pains but will usher in an era of prosperity in the medium and long term. Article blamed the economic challenges in the country on the poor policies of Tinumbu, the All Progressive Congress candidate and the virtual winner of the last poll. Tinumbu's poor response to Nigeria's economic challenges is setting the stage for a prolonged and deeper domestic economic crisis, the ex-VP said. His economic policies, drawn from a so-called renewed hope agenda, are ironically dashing hopes, creating pain and causing despair. President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu has been ordered to investigate the allegations that 3.4 billion US dollars loan obtained from the International Monetary Fund is missing, diverted or unaccounted for. The Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, which made the call in a statement, specifically warned the President to direct the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Mr. Latif Agbemi San, and appropriate anti-corruption agencies to promptly probe the allegations. Serap's Deputy Director, Kola Wale Oluwadari, said the request followed the 2020 annual audited report published last week by the Auditor General of the Federation documents damning revelations, including that there was no document to show the movement and spending of the IMF loan. According to the group, there is a legitimate public interest in ensuring justice and accountability for these serious allegations, adding that taking appropriate measures would end the impunity of perpetrators. Blackout was experienced by many Nigerians in major cities across the country on Sunday as the national grid collapsed first time in 2024. In a statement, the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, said the grid experienced a partial disturbance at about 12.21 hours with iron power islanded. Feeding Eket Etim, Ituk and Uyo, Uyo transmission substations during the period of partial disturbance. TCN initiated immediate restoration of the affected part of the grid and presently the grid is fully restored, said a spokesperson for the TC, Ndidi Umba. Prior to the incident, total generation of the grid was 3901.25 MW at 800 hours, a little over three hours before time of partial collapse. It is important to note that low power generation has persisted since January 2024 to date, excavating daily due to lingering gas constraint. According to the National Control Center, NCC, the Internet of Things, IOT, revealed that just as before the grid collapsed, the Cyperless Steam and Egum substations lost a total of 29.32 MW and 343.84 MW at 11.20.14 hours and 11.20.17 hours respectively, totaling 373.16 MW. Residents of Mina, the United States capital on Monday, protested high cost of living in the country, blocking major roads within the metropolis. The protesters, including women and youth, were aired chanting protest songs while security agents, including policemen, looked on. The protesters said the rising cost of food items and poor government efforts to arrest 
The situation forced them to block major roads so that government will hear their cry. The deputy governor of Niger State, Yakubu Garba, while addressing the protesters, said the government is aware of the pain and hardship families are faced with at this time. He said the government is working towards the re reducing the cost of living and consequences of petrol subsidy removal. From the north to the southwest, the Alara of Ara in the Ikole local government area of Ekiti State of Adebayo of Atoba has recounted his escape from a recent attack by gunmen that resulted in the tragic death of two of his colleagues last Monday. On January 29, Fatoba escaped after gunmen killed two monarchs, the Onimojo of Imojo Oba Olatunde Olushola and the Elesu of Esurekiti Oba Babatunde Obushaki while returning from a security meeting. The killing of the Oikiti monarchs raised eyebrows over the increasing insecurity in the country with a spate of kidnappings across the country. Speaking to uh, TV over Adebayo of Atoba recounted the harrowing experience, stating that the community had sought permission from the state police to address the persistent attacks by elders on the community. I was reading something on my phone when I suddenly felt that the driver slammed the brakes. As we looked up, we saw guns pointed at us. If they were kidnappers, they would have asked us to get down, raise our hands, and so on. Narrating his escape, Fatoba stated that the situation was a war zone and dismissed claims that he disappeared. It was a war zone. People who said that I disappeared, I want them to know that it is a lie. I ran to the security guards were put in that area because it had been a hot spot. I wanted to get them. According to him, upon reaching one of the security guards, he instructed the guard to fire into the air, but the firearm jammed. He added that security guards were gripped by fear and were unable to approach them for a rescue operation. Speaking further, he added that his driver also escaped because the government did not concentrate on him and only collected the car key. Moving on to the next story. The federal government said members of the National Youth Service Corps NYC are no longer posted to state deemed unsafe in the wake of worsening security conditions in the country. Several core members have been abducted in some part of the country during their one-year mandatory national service, raising fears about the sustainability of the scheme. But the Minister of Youth, Jamila Ibrahim, says the scheme has taken steps to secure NYSC members, including posting them only to safe states. As immediate intervention of the government and the NYSC as an agency, we have actually stopped posting core members to the, uh, to the very unsafe state, Jamila said during an interview. According to her, the security of core members requires collaboration with other agencies of government. We are also working on our transportation tra strategies for them to ensure that they are transported to and fro from camps safely and to the destinations. And finally, on sports, Victor Osimus Nigeria will aim to continue their formidable record at the Africa Cup of Nations when they take on South Africa in the semi finals on Wednesday while host Ivory Coast meet the Democratic Republic of Congo after a miraculous run to the last four. Nigeria appeared the strongest side left at the competition with the reigning Africa Footballer of the Year up front and the way coach Yusuf Pesero has made them so strong defensively. Since drawing 1-1 with Ikitu Rugini in their opening match, Nigeria have recorded four straight wins without conceding a goal. The Nigerians have won through a record 15 Cup of Nations semi-finals as they aim to lift the trophy for the fourth time and the fourth since 2013 in South Africa. It is the South Africans they face at the State de la Pets in the Bauke in a repeat of 2019 quarter-final in Egypt, which the Super Eagles won 2-1 thanks to current skipper William Truss' Econ late goal. But Fana Pafana follow that by failing to qualify for the last Afcon in 2022, but are back on the big stage under veteran Belgian coach Hugo Bruce, the man who led Cameroon to the 2017 title against the odds as taking South Africa today to their first semi final in 24 years, although they needed heroics from goalkeeper Rowan Williams to beat Cape Verde on penalties in the last eight. With the sports story, we've come to the end of today's national news. Before we go, some headlines Presidency, article clash over Tinubu's economic policies. Prop missing 3.4 billion US dollar. I, IMF loan, Sarah tells Tinubu. Blackout as national grid collapses first time in 2024. Road blockade as residents protest high living cost in Mina. 
how I escaped from gunmen who killed my colleagues, AKT Monarch recounts. On sports, South Africa face of serious Nigeria, Ivy Coast still alive in Afcon. For update of our broadcast on YouTube, our handle is Baba Bagede in more television. Can you subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all to access all of our broadcasts. On Facebook, Bagede in more week, along with Adibayo, please like and follow the page. For advert place, plenty goods and services, coverage of events and function, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placement. Thank you for watching. I am Moriri Rebila Lawal. Good afternoon. Thank you.